2008, an entire beach in Jamaica vanished. 500 truckloads of glittering white sand were stolen under the cover of darkness and never found. In fact, sand is being stolen all over the world, highlighting how this seemingly plentiful material is now so valuable that people will go to extraordinary lengths to obtain it. Sand isn't just the gritty granules that trap between your toes when you're at the beach. It's a mirror of the Earth's history that takes thousands, if not millions, of years to form. The colors of sand tell stories of landscapes long gone. On tropical beaches, sand gleams white, formed from the crushed skeletons of coral and marine life. Along volcanic shores, it turns black, from basalt born of molten lava. Red sands carry the tale of ancient iron-rich rocks, oxidized over time. And it's not just what sand's made of, it's also what can live in it. The Macher sand dunes in Scotland are home to hundreds of plants and animals and show just how vibrant and full of life sand can be. Like tree rings, the layers of a sand dune tell its history. In the Namib Desert, scientists use optical luminescence to reveal the sand's age, calculating the last time it saw sunlight. In Utah, petrified Jurassic dunes formed 180 million years ago are hardened into a magnificent alien landscape. Sand exhibits mysterious and unusual physics. In the Sahara, singing sand dunes produce a haunting hum heard for kilometers. This phenomenon occurs when a disturbance like a small avalanche sets the dune vibrating like a plucked cello string. 28 million years ago, a meteor struck the Libyan desert sand, and out of the intense forces forged one of the rarest materials, Libyan desert glass. So rare and prized, it sits in the center of Tutankhamun's breastplate, carved as a golden scarab. Sand's versatility as a building material was understood by the Romans. They figured out how to mix sand with lime and volcanic ash to create concrete, an invention that's literally stood the test of time. The Romans constructed vast networks of roads, aqueducts and structures whose remains have survived for two millennia. The Pantheon in Rome has the world's largest unreinforced concrete dome. 4,000 years ago in ancient Mesopotamia, humans first crafted glass using a simple mixture of sand, lime, and soda, heated then rapidly cooled. Today, it's in the windows we peer through, the screens we touch, and the fiber optic cables that carry our thoughts close to the speed of light. Silicon chips, the brains behind everything from smartphones to space shuttles are also made from precious quartz sand. We're literally surfing the internet on sand particles. It's hard to imagine our world running out of sand when we have deserts like the Sahara covering 8% of the planet and totaling over 9 million square kilometers. But desert sand, with its smooth, rounded grains shaped by wind, is useless in construction. It's like trying to build with marbles. Instead, the world's insatiable need for concrete buildings, bridges and motorways demands sand from rivers and coastlines which has angular grains that lock together like a jigsaw puzzle. And this usable sand is running out. Mining sand from rivers and coastlines disrupts ecosystems and threatens species that depend on those sediments. Sand flows down rivers, protecting shorelines, builds deltas, and helps prevent flooding. When too much is taken, a chain reaction is set off, leading to severe floods and erosion, and making us more vulnerable to nature's forces. And scarcity leads to crime. In parts of the world, so-called sand mafias, illegal mining gangs, dredge for sand so intensely that it's causing riverbanks to collapse, destroying villages. Those who oppose them often face violent retaliation. Sand has become a commodity so valuable that people are willing to kill for it. Today, concrete is the most common building material on the planet. If it were a country, it would rank among the world's top carbon emitters. If we were to embrace more sustainable building practices based on local materials and conditions, sand could be preserved for essential purposes and protected from over-extraction. Vulnerable rivers and dunes could also be protected using cattle or sheep to naturally manage vegetation, shift sand and boost biodiversity. 
or by planting natural barriers like mangroves to shield coastlines. So the next time you're walking on a beach, take a moment to feel the sand under your feet. You're standing on one of humanity's most prized resources, the remains of ancient ecosystems, and perhaps even the stuff that powers your smartphone. These tiny grains of sand are our history, sure, but they're also our future.